You know, I think every divorced guy in this town must live in this building. Uh-huh. Well, I'm not divorced. How did you avoid that? Oh, that was easy. I never got married. Never thought about it? Well, I thought about it, yes. Mm -hmm. But I just haven't found the right girl. Mm. Mm. Yet. It's a key tree. John Gaines? What? Are you Mr. John Gaines? Yes, I'm Mr. John Gaines. What do you want? I have to see you. You have to see me. Uh, just take me a second. What? Are, are you Mr. John Gaines? Yes. Mr. Gaines, I think you're my father. What did you say? I said, I think you're my father. I think you've been smoking something. Boy, they are really out tonight, I'll tell you. I got a nut out here who says he thinks I'm his father. Oh, boy, his father. I could be his father like he could be your father. You're old enough to be my father. I'm old enough to be your father? Why don't you go out and join him? I am only 37 years old. So, my father's only 36. How old are you? 16. 16? 16? Why, why do you dress like this? Why do you dress like this? Trying to look 17. Oh, no. Oh, no, you don't. No, here's your purse and here's your shawl. What's the matter? Nothing. I just don't want to spend the summer in San Quentin, that's all. I'd be delighted to drive you home. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, I'll walk. Swell. <laughs> oh, it's you. I'd like you to meet you. You two should be very happy. Is something wrong with him? I hope not. I think he's my father. Well, I guess he's no worse than mine. It's three o'clock in the morning. Go away. Yeah, but, but I came 600 miles to see you. Go 600 miles back. Can't you, can't you give me just a minute? You have. One minute. Uh, I don't know where to start. Look, you're wasting precious seconds. Look, don't you recognize me? I'm your son. Time's up. Wait a minute, you're my father. Shh. I'm nobody's father. You are my father. I'm nobody's father. Now, will you please leave? Please. <laughs> That's a very nice picture. It looks like me. It's you in your army uniform. I was not in the army. I was in the AMA. What? Arizona Military Academy. I had to go there because of my asthma. That girl looks familiar. That's my mother. Mother? Uh, she's back pretty, Lenny. Your mother. Is this a joke? No. What's your name? John Gaines, Jr. They call me BJ. I had nothing to do this weekend, so I had to come out and see the Pacific Ocean and look you up. 
not really interested, are you? No, I just need time to think. That's all. This is incredible. This is incredible. That's the only word I can think of right now. Yeah, well, I won't waste any more of your time. Where are you going to go? What does that mean? I mean, where are you going to stay tonight? Do you have a place to stay tonight? No, I haven't found one yet. You want to stay here? Tonight? Okay. like a miracle. What is? Well, you're not being dead and all. Dead? Well, Mom had always told me that your plane crashed in Korea. Huh? But Aunt Florence, you remember Aunt Florence, Mom's sister. Well, she said that wasn't true, so I decided I'd come out and see for myself. Did it or didn't it? Did it or didn't it what? Your plane crash in Korea. No. Didn't crash? No. But you were a war hero? No. Well, anyway, you were in Korea. No. No, I, I told you I, I had asthma. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Why are you all dressed up? It's Sunday. Well, this is Los Angeles. We're very informal here. Oh, I know we get dressed up on special occasions, like uh, weddings, funerals, things like that. But just to knock around on a Sunday, I think blue jeans would be just fine. What about church? Well, I... I guess the people who go to church get dressed up, yeah. Don't you go to church? No. Never? No. Why not? I just don't. Mm. Don't get me wrong, though. I mean, if you want to uh, get up early on a Sunday morning, get all dressed up and go inside a church when the sun is outside, you should do it. Hello. Uh, hi, Mother. Uh, look, just hang on a second, will you, please? Yeah, well, wait, wait, wait one moment. Yes, uh, all right, Mother. No, no, what, what was it? Uh-huh. Mother, I feel fine. I do, I feel fine, Mother. Edie. Edie didn't say a word to me. Well, thank you, Mother, but I am perfectly capable of making my own breakfast plans. Mother. Oh, Mother. Mother, may, may I call you back in a few minutes? I have something important I have to do. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Yes. Yes, Mother. All right. Yes, Mother. Goodbye. Sure. Right. Sure, you don't want to come in with me? No, some other time, maybe. Hi, Johnny. What are you doing up so early? Um, yeah, but hi, Jenny. 
Katie, girl, I know, uh, which reminds me, listen, if we run into any more people today, why don't I just introduce you as, um, that's, uh, B.J., uh, uh, Van S. B.J. Van S., uh, an out-of-town buyer. What's the matter with my real name? Well, nothing. Uh, it, it's just that, um, well, big cities are like small towns. Uh, they're even worse, you know, and people are liable to talk, you know. Yeah. But if you came to Arizona, I'd want people to know that you were my father. Yeah, well, uh, how long do you think you'll be in there? About an hour. Good, good. Well, enjoy the matinee. so early. I was in your neighborhood. <laughs> Why didn't you call? Why didn't you pull myself together? Oh, cut it out. Now, have I ever complained about the way you look in the morning? <laughs> no. Never <laughs> have, no. Edie. <laughs> Edie, I, um, <laughs> I have a little favor that I would like to ask of you. <laughs> and I would really appreciate it if you didn't ask me to explain. All right? All right. All right. Edie? What? I would like you to call <laughs> my <laughs> mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and explain to her, please, that we will not be able to join them for breakfast today. Oh, why not? Edie, I asked you not to make me explain, please. <sighs> Is there anything I can do? No. No, nothing. Well, Anything. No. Nope. No, everything is under control, and by sundown tonight, it'll be gone. Well, we may not have seen the Pacific Ocean, but I would say that it's the end of an almost perfect day. Yeah, that's right. It's a perfect day. Hungry? Little? Okay, I'll tell you what. Why don't we go by my apartment, and uh, we'll pack up your things, and then we can go to a great restaurant and have dinner before we go to the bus depot. Why do we have to go to the bus depot? Why? Well, certainly you have to go back to school, to your family. I mean... What family? What do you mean, what family? Your mother. I know she must miss you. Your mother's dead. We buried her last Wednesday. The only other family I have is Aunt Florence. Well, what, what about her? She's a nun. I might as well stay here with you. Uh, hi, Ben. This is Johnny. Listen, may I talk to you this morning? Yes, it's very important. As a matter of fact, it's a matter of life and death. No, seriously, I mean life and death. I think I have a real problem in my hands this time. Yeah. Well, since you're coming in for the meeting at 10, would you mind coming in at 9 so we could talk? Oh, that's great. Oh, fine. I, I appreciate it. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, good morning. Sleep well? Yeah, fine. Hey, you want me to... Fix breakfast this morning? No, no, you go ahead and fix breakfast for yourself, but don't leave here and wait until I call you. I have to go to work and keep the wolves away from our door. All right, by the way, what do you do? What do I do about what? You know, are you a deep-sea diver, lawyer, test pilot, demolitions expert? I sell dresses.
Claire. Johnny, is that you? Uh, no, I'm not Johnny. I'm a friend of Johnny. My name's BJ. Oh. Hi, I'm Rhonda. Hi. I didn't know anybody would be home. I just came by to pick up my interview dress. I'm reading for a cat food commercial this afternoon. Gee, gee that's very interesting. Uh, look, I'm a little pressed for time, and I don't want to put you out. Is it okay if I come in there with you for a few minutes? Come in here? Yes. Uh, no, you can't do that. Why not? Why? Because there's no more hot water. You don't sound like a friend of Johnny's. After all, I wasn't going to hurt you. You're sure not very friendly. Oh, um... Well, we've only just met. We're like total strangers. I just love kitty tum -yums. What? I just love kitty tum -yums. That's the voice I'm going to be using. I'm supposed to be a cat. Oh, that, that's very interesting. Do you live here? Nope. You just come here to pick up your clothes and take showers? Yep. Very tall or very unchic. wants to see you. How about that? I haven't been in the building but two minutes. He's in? He's in. Hmm. You wanted to see me? Yeah, I'll be in forget about tonight. Tonight? What about tonight? Dinner at the club. I forgot. You were supposed to ask Edie to go with you. Dad, I told you, I forgot. It's all right, I asked her for you. You asked her for me? Dad, I am a big boy now. I can make my own dates, thank you. As a matter of fact, I happen to already have a date for tonight. So cancel it, it's not a terrible tragedy. <sighs> I haven't got time to argue. I pay for your time, so don't tell me when you'll have time. And I work very hard for that pay, and you know it. I know you work very hard, and why shouldn't you? This whole thing will be yours someday. After all, I don't, don't plan to live forever. Hi, lover. Hello, Mom. Mother. Mother. Are you and Edie having dinner with us at the club tonight? He sure is. Oh, good. <laughs> After all, you missed breakfast with us yesterday. Yes. A lovely tie. Thank you. Hello. Mm -hmm. Let me see your suit. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> oh, yeah, okay. Love it. Ben Beagleman is waiting in your office. Something wrong? Why should something be wrong? Why are you dealing directly with a company lawyer? It's just something that's wrong with my car, Dad. Excuse what do you mean me? wrong with your no. car, dear? <sighs> it's no life for a boy running around like that. You have to do something, Al. What do you want me to do? Well, for one thing, I want you to do everything you can to keep those two together. She's the perfect girl for him. She comes from a nice family. She's not too independent. Or too smart. 
I'm telling you, if one of those sharp cookies gets a hold of him, I will never forgive you, Al. Ethel, what more can I do? Johnny needs a secretary like I needed a pants presser. You ask me to put her on, I put her on. She gets $144 a week plus fringe benefits. She can't type, she can't take shorthand. Well, why should she have to type or take shorthand? She'll be left a bundle when Herb dies. Please, don't rush him. He's a year younger than I am. <laughs> Well, I am so worried that Johnny will meet the wrong kind of girl, especially since he's not living at home anymore. It was that raise you gave him. You told me to give him a raise. You said give him enough money so he won't quit, but not enough to get him in trouble. Mm. Ethel, you're driving me crazy. What do you want from the boy? I want him to be happily married, just like you, Al. Well, is that so terrible? Ben, I, uh, I don't know where to start. Well, how about starting with once upon a time? Oh, come on now, Ben, I mean it. I, I, I don't know if this began last Saturday or last Saturday 18 years ago. Look, Johnny, why don't you just sit down and tell me all about it? Hmm? All right. Well, once upon a time... Woohoo. Is he in there? Yes. How are you, honey? Mm. Is he paying any more attention to you? <laughs> well, I, I... You know, I was thinking, just between us girls, maybe a padded bra wouldn't hurt. You know, something would... You know... <laughs> and if you like, I'll get you the afternoon off, and I'll take you to Carlo's, and he'll do your hair just like mine. Johnny would love that. Uh, I, 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 I appreciate it, uh, but, but I don't think it's necessary, Mrs. Gaines. Mrs. Gaines? You call me Ethel. And please, God, one day it'll be Mother. Get me the registrar at the Hall of Records in... Colpville, Arizona. Colpville, Arizona. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Johnny. All right. So, anyhow, I horse him around town, you know, show him the city. And then, Ben, he tells me he is going to stay here. Now, legally, what are my responsibilities? Well, let's check the records first. But I'm not thinking legally right now. I'm thinking about what people will say. Please don't. I'm thinking about two people in particular, your father and your mother. Now, Al, I'm sure, once he adjusts to the idea, well, he might like it. But Ethel, she thinks she's a young woman, Johnny. And she thinks you're her little boy. Now, what would happen if suddenly... No, don't, don't finish, Ben. Just tell me, what do I do? First thing you do is relax. Hello, sir. I wonder if I might get you to check the birth registration file for me. Uh, yes, uh, 1953-54. Mother, Mrs. Gaines. Yes, sir. Mother, Lois Kelly. It was a son. Right, now, hold on. You know, if worse comes to worst, you'll live. After all, you're not the first guy in the world to become a father. What kind of an answer is that, Ben? I mean, what kind of an answer is that? Most people who become fathers, at least they get married first, they wait nine months to have a baby, Ben, and then it's about that size, somewhere in there. And then it grows, and it grows, and it, and it, and it, and it grows, and you change all those diapers, Ben, and then when it finally gets somewhere in this area, you, you, you take it to the pony park, and you take it to the, to the Little League games, and you buy it a Boy Scout uniform, and then after all that time, Ben, after all those adjustments, then you get someone the size of BJ. Uh, yes, yes, I'm still waiting. You know, that's not gonna help. All expectant fathers do it. Uh, yes. Yes, that's right, Lois Kelly. So what's the name of the father on the certificate? Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Congratulations. You've just had a baby boy. Have I? The father's name on the certificate is John Gaines. Thank you, Lynn. Are you sick? No, I'm fine. Well, is there anything I can do? Yes. Order me a box of cigars. I've been driving by this place. I imagine most of my life. And if you hadn't yelled, I'd probably still be driving by this place most of my life. Well, when he asked me if I was hungry, I suddenly realized I hadn't had good Mexican food in about three days. Good Mexican food. Did you huh. like it? Well, um, yeah, it's all right, you know, but, you know, and it just, well, it sort of all tastes the same to me. Really? Yeah. You put cream in your chili? Yeah. That's how my mother used to make it. What was she like? What do you mean? Well, I mean, uh, was she nice? <laughs> of course she was nice. She has to have been a redhead, right? I mean, she has to have been. You don't even remember her, do you? No, not very well. How long did you know her? Maybe two weeks. Uh... You weren't married, were you? No. You sure? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure. Well, I guess we know what that makes me. Oh, well, come on now. This is today. Thinks about that anymore. No one cares. You didn't know about me, did you? What would you have done if you'd known? I don't know. You really put cream in your chili. <laughs> Yeah, you want some? No, no, no. My mother never did that to me. Your mother? Is your mother still a... Uh... Oh, yes. Oh, is she ever? Oh. How about your dad? Oh, he, he, both of them, both of them. Just going so strong. Oh. Grandparents. Wow. When do I get to meet them? Uh, that'd be a problem. Yes, that, well, yes, that would definitely be a problem, particularly at this, uh, this time. But, um, speaking of problems, I'll tell you. I have one, and you really could sort of help me out with it, if you don't mind. Well, huh? I mean, it's nothing difficult, you know. It's very simple. You see, I... <laughs> I managed to get myself into a position of having two dates tonight. So if you could just, um, sort of help me by taking one off my hands, just for a little while. What's her name? Edie. Isn't she a little older than me? Well, uh, yeah. You know, but I can uh, uh, tell her that you're 25 years old and she'll never know the difference, you know. Well, uh, didn't Edie expect to spend the evening with you? Yeah, but it doesn't really matter, you know. It's, it's okay. Have you dated her before? Yeah, I'm... And you don't mind me taking your girl out? Hey! What are fathers for?
come on. Are you sure this is going to be all right? It's going to be just fine. I told you she is an employee. She's my secretary. And the only reason she got the job is because her parents met my parents a year ago on a Caribbean cruise. That's all. Come on. Well, what if she doesn't like me? She will like you. Will you relax? Come on. Uh -huh. This always makes her mad. <laughs> Come on in. Now, do you open your door to just anybody? No, just anybody doesn't put his finger over the people. Mm-hmm. See, I told you so. All right, come on in. Well, uh... Edie? BJ, BJ, Edie. Hi. All right, now. I'm not much on drinking. Well, just, just, just a small one, you know, to, uh, to get your motor started. Why don't you two just sit down and, uh, get acquainted? Hi. Nice to know you. Nice to know you. Okay, we're acquainted now. Uh, would you please tell me what's going on? Nothing. Nothing. Where are you from, BJ? Arizona. Been in town long? No, no, not long at all. Planning on staying? Uh, yeah. This is my home now. Ah, well, come on. How about a nice, quiet little drink? Hmm? I mean, after all, we could all... We can all talk later. Well, no, no, wait a minute. Are we all going to be together later? Well, first, a quiet drink, all right? Now, I would like to propose a toast. So, uh, I shall propose a toast. Uh, here's to... Here's to a nice, quiet drink. Yes, I'll drink to that. Oh, that's good. That's a good one. Ah. <clears throat> How you like it? Not much. Not much? Oh, well, it just takes a while for the taste buds to adjust, that's all. You see, uh, after the first one, well, the, the second martini just sort of slides down. <laughs> Well? Fine. Uh-huh. Yes, well, I suppose it does take a little time to, uh, adjust to martinis, right, Edie? Right, right. Now, look, shouldn't we be leaving? Oh, yes. Well, well there has been a small change in plans, just a, a small change. Now, Edie, I already had a date for tonight. Now, uh, that was before Dad called and told me that all the families intended to get together, you know, and all that. So I thought the best of all possible worlds would be for me to, uh, uh, to go with you to the club. And, and then, uh, when we're through doing our dues, uh, I'll, I'll come back with you, leave you with, with BJ, and you can spend some time together. And, and while I take my date, you see, I couldn't reach her on the phone. So uh, I at least take her home, and then I'll come back and, uh, and I'll pick up uh, uh, BJ. BJ? BJ? You all right? Oh, I never felt better. Good. Good. All right, I'll, I'll tell you what. I will be back in three and a half minutes, so don't anybody run away. Okay. Hi, Edie. Things are moving a little fast. Mm. <laughs> Something the matter? Edie? Open up. Edie, hey, would you open the door? I think I'm going to be sick. Oh, all right. Just, just give me a second. Can you hear me? You okay? Oh, wait, let me get you over here to the couch. Then I'll get you some coffee. Oh, no, 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 no coffee. Yes, I don't like coffee. yes, yes. Just stand there. I'll be right back. Now, take it. 
it easy. Mm -hmm. Look, you'll be all right in a few minutes. Uh, look. Oh. You, one thing you should never do, and that is to take a drink on an empty stomach. Okay? Is it true about you and him? Is what true? You know. He told you that. Told me enough a lot. I don't believe it. Do you love him? Look, why don't we... Why don't we talk about you for a change? Okay. How old are you? I am 25. Just turned 24. <laughs> I'd say 19. Hmm. Not quite 18. Well, what did he have on his mind? Why, I mean, how did he find you? Oh, he didn't find me. I found him. He's my father. He's my father. Only he didn't know about me. If I had come out here to look him up... Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, some pad. Malto Groovy. Uh-huh. Uh, that's Rhonda. Uh, Rhonda, this is Edie. Greetings, Edie. Ah, and uh, that's that's BJ on the couch over there. Hello again. Hello again. Oh, I met BJ this afternoon when I stopped by your apartment to pick up my dress. Oh. Huh. Oh, I, I had a sample of 22C mm -hmm. over at my place. Look, Edie, um, I think it'd be best if we took. Your car for the two of us, and I'll give my car to B.J. And they can I don't think B.J. is going to be in any shape to do anything tonight. Besides, I want to have a little talk with you. Talk? Huh? Look, will you two make yourselves at home? We're going for a little walk. <laughs> Look, Johnny, I can't tell you what to do. You're a, a grown man. This is between you and him. What does he want? What does he want? He wants to live with me. Live with me? Now, what are my parents gonna say? Oh, what difference does it make? What difference does it make? You know how they're gonna feel about being late at that stupid dinner tonight, Look, so this, how are they gonna feel about a dinner, grandson? The stupid dinner happens to be because my mother and father came down from San Francisco, and your mother, your mother, made a decision that we should get the whole family together. The whole family. Well, what do they expect of us? I mean, the whole thing is so ridiculous. All right. Don't worry about it. I'll explain it to them. That'll be my job. You go back in there and pick up BJ, and uh, that's your job. And I'll call them at the club. Uh, yeah, but either you... Uh... You won't say anything. No, 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 no. That'll be for you to do. Edie, you're a nice lady. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm hungry. Where are they? Oh, they probably just stopped off for a little lovemaking. Ethel, what are you saying? You're such a stick in the mud. I had a little talk with Edie this afternoon. I told her some things a boy like Johnny would like to hear. Ethel. Al, these things just don't happen by themselves. They have to be managed. Telephone, Mr. King. Oh, Hello. Oh, hello, Edie. Where are you? We're starving here. Is she all right? If she's with Johnny, she's all right. Oh, I see. No, no, it's okay. No, 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 it's all right, honey. It's all right. Well? Uh, we'll order now. Well? Well, Johnny had something else to do, and he didn't want to come over alone. That's all? That's all. If I didn't know Edie any better, I think she was crying. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, nonsense. They're together. They probably just stopped somewhere for a little lovemaking. Ethel, they've both been together in the office for the past six months, right under my nose. Believe me, there's no lovemaking going on. So he's still young. What's the hurry? Al, it's not like we've known each other for 30 years. A year ago, I wouldn't have known you from Adam, but I just feel that... Never mind. What do you mean, never mind? What? what? It's nothing, nothing. What do you mean, nothing, nothing? There's something on your mind? Well, not every guy wants to settle down and get married these days, that's all. Well, not every guy wants to settle down and get married. Big deal. <laughs> well, I think there was something else. Go on, tell him, Herb. Well, yes, Herb, go ahead, tell him. Yeah, tell me. Well, there's some guys that just don't like girls, you know. I'm like, John. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> you, you think Johnny doesn't like girls? I'm not talking about Johnny, necessarily, and I'm not talking about anybody in particular. But there are a lot of guys around. Well, like Rose's cousin. Be Roy, the interior decorator in Sausalito. Yeah, well, what has he got to do with this? He's got a very nice business. He makes 50 or 60 a year. The women just love what he can do to a room. And he's as happy as a clam. He lives in this big Victorian house in Half Moon Bay. It's 11 o'clock. Uh, tell me, um, have you seen enough of the Pacific Ocean now? Yes, it is. Good, fine. Now, what would you like to do? I, uh, I'd like to talk. About what? About us, about our future. Look, BJ. Everything is going to be okay. Do you believe that? It's just going to take a little time. That's all. Just a little time. I don't care if it takes forever. We belong together. Don't you see that? Oh, come on, BJ. Of course I see that. I understand that. But... Look. Look, are you, are you hungry? No. Look, if you're worried about losing your job, you can come work with me. Come work with you doing what? Running the gas station. Gas station? Yeah, it's just a two-pumper. It's closed now, but uh, I went free and clear. A gas station? Yeah. I suppose half yours now, too. Look out, Dad. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. What do you mean it's half mine? Because, it's from my father. The gas station. Well, Grandpa died, and Aunt Florence was already in a convent, so he left it to Mom. Hmm. Well, it must have been tough for her. I mean, it's hard enough for a man, but for a woman, you know. But I, I guess your mother was big, uh, strong for a woman. You don't remember what you looked like, huh? Oh, yes, I remember. Um, it's just that people change, you know. Just time and a half goes by. She remembered you, talks about you all the time. She told you about me? A lot. She, she wasn't ashamed, neither was I. You know, when something like that happens, it can be beautiful. That's what Mom said. I don't know what to say. She didn't blame you or anything. It's the truth. I would lie about a thing like that. She was blonde with light green eyes, five feet four, and weighed 109 pounds, if you'd care to know. forget after this. Oh, 
Okay. Okay, let's, uh, let's get out of here. I'm going to introduce you to some people that I can't possibly describe to you. Who's that? Your grandparents. <laughs> Come on. What kind of a boy is it goes around 37 years never married? Interior decorators, that's what kind. And hairdressers. I'll get it. Hello? It's Johnny. Johnny? I'm coming, dear. What's the matter, sweetheart? Oh. Well, wait a minute. He's got somebody he wants us to meet. What time is it? Uh, it's uh, 11.15. Oh. Well, couldn't it wait, sweetheart? It's after 11. Uh-huh. No, no. Okay, if that's the way you feel about it, you come right over. We'll be here. So? So he's got somebody he wants us to meet and it won't wait. I wonder who it could be. You don't suppose it's that topless dancer? Topless dancer? Yes, the one whose father's a judge over in Orange County. Counter of a judge? That'd be too much to hope for. We better get dressed just in case. They're here. Oh, is somebody with him? Yes. What does she look like? I think you better sit down, Ethel. Oh, she's nothing special. Ethel, sit down. She's ugly. Ethel. I'm going to look for myself. Ethel, I... Oh, my God. Look, um, uh, it's not too late to back out. I don't want to back out, do you? No. No, it's, it's, it's got to be done. What are we going to do? I don't know. Well, we have to let him in and talk to them. Why? He's your son. He's your son, too. What are we going to say? Don't say anything. Just listen. What if I start to cry? You're really nervous, aren't you? No. No, it's, uh, this is the only way. I'm gonna have to get some more money. Money? Is that what this is about? Money? Is that why we're here? That's one of the reasons, yes. Besides, you're going to have to meet my parents sometime. I don't make enough money to support us on my income. Do you think it's because I want you to support me? No. I don't need you to support me. I supported myself long before I met you. I'm sure you have, BJ. Please. That's all you think about is money. I'm sorry. I'm not going in there. I'm not, I'm not meeting anybody. BJ, we've come this far. I really don't care if I ever see you again. Bye. Wait. Uh, don't go to sleep. I got something I've got to tell you. Where did we go wrong? Okay. I said goodbye. Nice knowing you. BJ. I don't need you. I don't need your All help. Right. I'm sorry I made it sound like that. It's just that everything happens so fast. Happened to me too, you know. It isn't every day you find out you have a grown son. A man. I'm not even sure I think of myself as a man. The whole thing has been such a shock to me. What about me? My whole life I, I've grown up being told my father was a war hero. Save the world for me. Some war hero. Oh, that's not fair, BJ. Now, I told you they wouldn't accept me. Will you stop all this foolishness and just come back with me? I'm not going anywhere with you. 
What are you afraid of? BJ, I didn't know what my parents would say. Oh, right, yeah. They might send you to bed without supper. No, you're a coward. What did you say? I said you're a coward. Now, will you come back? Okay. I was trying to start something. Yeah, well, I think you were starting in the wrong place. Your parents, that's for later, something else. Right now, it's between you and me. You're my father. I'm your son. That's the way it is. Now, if you don't like it like that, I can take off. I like it fine, just fine. I'm sorry I slept. It's okay. Can we talk now? That's all you ever ask me? Am I hungry? Mm -hmm. Well, are you? Yeah. All right, I'll fix you some scrambled eggs. And then we will sit down and we'll have a nice long talk, okay? Okay. Johnny, know? What's he going to think? I don't think it matters to him. Is there anything I can do? No. But thanks. You know what I mean? Bye. BJ. Goodbye. Be careful, <laughs> will you? Please. Yeah, you too. about that later. It, it's BJ. He's gone. Mm. Gone? Where? Home. He just left. If you want to, you can catch him. Why? Why would he go? Why not? <laughs>
BJ, will you get in this car? BJ! BJ, you know, I really don't know what I was thinking about when I came here. BJ, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about? All right, then I'm not sorry. What do you want me to say? BJ, we can talk about no, this. No, you're wrong. We can't talk. Why not? Because we're different. What do you mean, different? How can we be different? You're my son. Now, when you come back to the apartment, we will sit down and we'll talk. Right. You'll ask me if I'm hungry. BJ, will you, back. will you give me a chance? Now, where are you going? Don't worry. I'll be back to bother you again. I want to talk with you. I want you to talk to me. Why are you staring at me like that? <laughs> I'm not staring at you. Then why are you looking at me that way? I I'm not looking at you um, in any way. It's just that, that you've been acting very... Oh, I don't know. Oh, now, come on, Edie. Put it in words. Be specific. Well, you should be... The happiest guy in the world right now. You've gotten what you wanted. He's gone. You're free of him forever. That's an important word to you, isn't it, Johnny? Forever. But you don't like that word. Do you know why? No, why? Because forever means a commitment. Everything's fine for you as long as it's not forever. Where you live, what you do, who you see. But let me tell you something. Life isn't forever. And as soon as you realize that, you'll start living it. Why don't we talk about this later? And why don't we have dinner together tonight? Not tonight. Tomorrow night? No, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. I've uh, explained as much as I could to your father, but... Johnny, this is my last day. Kidding. Huh? Well, I think you're making a terrible mistake. Mm. I know you do, Johnny. We could have an early dinner tonight. And then we could take an early movie. No, no, no. Okay. If that's the way you want it. Oh, would you uh, call Rhonda Lewis for me, please? I think she works at uh, KDF TV. Please. Come on, Edie. We work to 5.30 here. Tell you what. After we finish here, why don't we go to the Apple? We were there last night. Well, all right. Then we'll uh, go to the cellar. The night before. Hey. Is it my fault there's only two discotheques in town? No. But maybe it's your fault they're not fun anymore. What's that supposed to mean? You're different. Like bringing me here. What for? <laughs> I happen to like the food here. Yeah, and why haven't you brought me here six months ago, hmm? Hoping your folks might show up, Johnny? Rub it in a little bit. Hey, folks, look who I brought to the country club. Take that and lump it. Ah, uh, you really are being silly, you know that? No, I'm not. I like you. I really do. And I've always known where I stood with you, and I didn't mind. But it's over, isn't it? You're bored. I know it's not me. It's everybody like me. You've just had it. Rhonda. Don't, Johnny. 
You never lied to me before, so don't start now. You know something? You're growing up, Johnny boy. And you need your son. How did you know about my son? He told me. Well? Don't blame him. He was just so proud. Well, let's get out of here. No. Just me, Johnny. Hey, I don't belong here. But you know something? I'm lucky, because I know it. I just hope you find out where you belong before it's too late, huh? Bye, Johnny. Just about never plays animals. Mm, I can believe that. Hey, can I come in? No. Well, please, Edie, I want to uh, I want to talk with him. There's nothing to talk about. Oh, don't give me any of that. Please, don't give me any of that. I, uh... Well, you see, there's nobody else. Sorry, Johnny. <laughs> Edie? Edie, I'm all alone. You know how I hate to be alone. You'd be with anybody rather than be alone, right? No, I didn't say that. I didn't mean that. I didn't. All right, I won't touch you, okay? It's just that I want to be with somebody till I get everything straightened out. It has nothing to do with me. But don't you have any feelings for me? What difference does it make? Johnny, please, please go away. Need some help, Edie? No, no, I'll be there in a second. Oh. Oh, so that's it. You have a new boyfriend. No, Johnny. A new man friend. What's this all about? Uh, Johnny, uh, the mob won't come to Mohammed, and Mohammed comes to the mob, right? What is it now? Darling, we're your parents. You can talk to us. Tell us what's wrong. 
It makes you think something's wrong. Well, ask anybody. Uh, Johnny, uh, maybe it's my fault. I never took you to enough ball games. I should have taken you to the fights, but I just never had enough time. What? And when you were 15, I wanted to buy you a motorcycle, but your mother... He would have killed himself. But all that's water under the bridge. Thank God we've got money. I'll take you to the best psychiatrist we can find. I think he's someplace in New York. Switzerland. There's nothing wrong. Well, then tell us what is the matter with you. You have a job, you have a car, you have parents who love you, you have everything a boy could want. Mother, I'm not a boy. I'm a man. Oh, Johnny, Johnny, will you say something? I'm not a boy! So please don't think of me as a boy. Because I'm a man. I am not a boy. I don't want the job. And I don't want the car. And I don't want the parents to love me. Like a little boy. <clears throat> what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I belong here. I've been uh, from one end of this state to the other looking for you. Why? Unless, uh, I was looking for somebody to talk to. Do you know what I mean? Hmm? Hungry? Come on. 